Today is December the 20th, the fourth Sunday of Advent. The dynamic of prophetic promise and fulfillment is deeply embedded in the Christian understanding of the Bible. Four peak moments unify the sweeping story of salvation in the Jewish Bible, our Christian Old Testament. These are represented by the election of Abraham, the deliverance through Moses, the kingship of David, and the restoration after the Babylonian exile. Christianity affirms the continuing potency and reality of these events for both synagogue and church and adds a fifth culminating moment in the person and paschal mystery of our Lord Jesus Christ. We believe that this final moment of salvation history was figuratively anticipated by types that are found in the previous four Old Testament moments and many others. These interrelationships of typology continue to shape Christian liturgy, prayer, theology, and practice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hello once again, and welcome to our Mass here at St. Stephen. My dear people of God, wherever you are, people of God of St. Stephen, we offer this Mass for all of you for all your intentions, your needs, your petitions. Whatever you're going through, through this Mass, may God give you the grace that you need to be able to uh, continue to have faith in Him, to trust in Him, that He will provide for you. He will give you everything you need to see things through. And we are very happy to have with us our friends, Gabriel, for our music. Thank you. And AJ, thank you for covering this Mass. And Judy, thank you for reading for us and Lord is for preparing everything we need. 
Lord, above all, we thank you in spite of this pandemic. We thank you. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for still being able to live. Thank you for all your gifts of healing for us. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, every virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now let us ask Judy, our beloved lector and friend, to please light the candle for this fourth Sunday of Advent. Thank you very much, Judy. Thank you, God, for our Advent wreath. Thank you for this fourth Sunday of Advent. Thank you for being our light. Thank you for guiding us in our path. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, here I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, go, do whatever you have in mind for the Lord is with you. But that night, the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord, should you build me a house to dwell in? 
It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people, Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people, Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people, Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Lectura de la Carta del Apóstol San Pablo a los Romanos Hermanos, aquel que puede darles fuerza para cumplir el Evangelio que yo he proclamado, predicando a Cristo conforme a la revelación del misterio mantenido en secreto durante siglos y que ahora, en cumplimiento del designio eterno de Dios, ha quedado manifestado por las Sagradas Escrituras para atraer a todas las naciones a la obediencia de la fe al Dios único, infinitamente sabio. Démosle gloria por Jesucristo para siempre. Amén. Palabra de Dios. Te alabamos, Señor.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be? since I have no relations with a man. And the angel said to her in reply, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just a request if we could add in our prayers in this mass, these people, oh, the Pena family, hello Rafa and um, Rafa and um, I forgot the name of the wife. <laughs> it's embarrassing. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we offer this mass for uh, the Pena family and also um, for the Harris family, we, all, we pray for you, Arturo, for your re healing, for your recovery. And also, we pray for Robert Aguiar, the brother of Art. Art, we're praying also for your family, for uh, Valerie and Arthur and his family, and also for Sandy. And uh, so, thank you. Praise the Lord, alleluia, God is the best all the time. I can do everything in Christ who strengthens me and the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Um, promise, promise is very important. It is a, a huge deposit if we are able to fulfill our promises and it's a, a bad withdrawal according to Dr. Stephen Covey of the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, to be failing and delivering on our promises. So whenever uh, a promise has been made to you and it was broken, it was not fulfilled, we, we, feel, we feel disappointed. We feel upset. We um, soon... A lot of relationships had broken down because of broken promises, like in marriage. Um, you begin to doubt the person whenever he would say something, especially making a promise. So uh, it is very important whenever we make a promise, we make it happen. 
We do our best. Just like Judy, Judy said, Father Joseph, if you need me, I'm going to read. And we asked her, and she's here. And uh, one, one uh, promise we oftentimes make is, I'm going to be there. And, and as they say, 80%, even higher than that, 90% of success in life is showing up. So whenever we make promise, um, we, whenever Dr. Stephen Covey also said, whenever we make promise, promise little and do more. Just promise little. Don't, don't uh, promise big things and then ending up not being able to fulfill. And then do more than what you've promised. That's a huge, huge deposit in relationships. So, um, and so whenever we are not sure, we better not make a promise. If you're not sure. But there's someone who's always been sure. That's why he made a lot of promises to us. Big promises. Big promises. And that's no one else, no other than God. God, in our readings today, this fourth Sunday of Advent, had revealed to us a lot of his promises. Basically, it is his promise to send us our Redeemer. In the first reading from the second book of Samuel, we find God promising through Nathan, Nathan speaking the words of God to King David, that God will make sure that his, um, his kingdom will stand firm forever. His kingdom will stand firm forever that he will have somebody, a son, his descendant, who will be reigning, ruling over his people forever. That no enemy, no enemy can ever overcome or defeat him or, or remove him. He will always rule forever and ever. And we also find through the Archangel Gabriel and the Gospel that uh, God had told Mary that she will bear a son. Even if you don't know any man, if you haven't any relations with man, with anyone, and your cousin who has been considered barren will bear a son and you will bear a son yourself. He will be the son of God. Big promises, great promises, and God fulfilled all of them. He made his promise to David, he made his promise to Mary, and to his people, and to all of us. This is why always, always trust in the Lord. Whenever God makes, makes a promise to us that I will always be there, I'll always be with you forever and ever, even if, um, even if no matter what happens, even if uh, the future uh, looks bleak, I will deliver into my promises. Don't worry. He remembers his promise. He will never forget that. As, as promised by his prophets, the prophets of old, that God will always take good care of his people, that he would send them Jesus, the Savior, all the we, that, that people have waited for. He will deliver on his promises. So never lose hope. Like today, we're experiencing this pandemic. It is very difficult. Um, financially, we'll, we're, having, um, we're having, we don't know where to 
were to, to find food for the family. We can't find work. We, we can't buy whatever we need because we're, we're financially, it's difficult. People are getting sick. We don't know what's going to happen, but always remain trusting in God. He will take good care of us. Whatever we need, He will provide for us. But we just have to be patient. Just have to be patient. In God's time, He will give us what we need. He will provide for us. He will grant us whatever we're praying for, healing, a work, a home, people who could help us. He will give them all to us, but in His time, just have to be patient. And, and even if everybody says, oh, we will, we're done. No, don't believe what people are saying. There's no, that God doesn't care. Still believe. And, you know, well, the beautiful thing about the God's plan and God's promise, He fulfilled His promise by choosing humble people like Mother Mary. He chooses, most of the time, He chooses humble people, little people, people you don't expect, sinful people, to fulfill His promise. And that's, isn't that... <laughs> beautiful. He will deliver on his promise and he will choose, you know, the most unlikely people. That could be you. That could be me. All of us who consider, Lord, who am I? No. Mama Mary was a humble person. Not, not rich. Very young. A woman. Unknown. And yet God chose her. God chose David, a humble shepherd. God chose Elizabeth to be the mother of the forerunner of Jesus. Very, very unlikely people, barren, uh, virgin, <laughs> a shepherd, young shepherd, sinful people like St. Paul, so, I'm sure he's going to choose you too. And don't you ever say, who am I to be chosen by? Today, it is also a good uh, lesson for all of us that God may choose you to make his plan work. Whenever we're doing something nice, we're doing something good, we're serving the church, we're serving people, we're helping the poor, we're making God's promise happen, that God will be here, that, that God is here, that Jesus is always with us whenever we do good things. So besides making our promises happen, make God's promise happen through you and me in all our sinfulness, in all our brokenness, we could still be a humble instrument like our mother Mary to fulfill God's promise, to make his plan work. And for all of us who are feeling like, oh, I'd rather kill myself, I'd rather end my life because there's no hope in this, in this time of pandemic. No work, no money. People, are, people have left me, no home. Stay trusting. Like Blessed Mother who said, be done to me according to your word. She was very, very strong in her faith. Okay, Lord, if that's what you want, even if I don't understand everything, what you're telling me, what you, you want me to do, I obey you, and I trust in you. I trust in your word. What if we end this homily with a 
song. It is, it is just the refrain of this, you know, the footprints in the sand, Judy? Footprints in the sand. Let me sing the refrain of this, uh, this song. This is for all of us who sometimes feel like um, God is asleep. God will, who, for all of us who sometimes doubt and the promises of God. Footprints in the sand, he held me in his hands. He gave me strength to face the coming day. At times I felt alone, I was never on my own. Someday I'll understand footprints in the sand, footprints in the sand. Thank you, Guy and Ralna, who composed this song. Amen. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For as men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gabriel tells Mary, do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. With trust in our God's never-ending love and merciful compassion, let us place our needs before him. Our response is, hear now, O Lord, the prayers we hold in our hearts. Hear now, O Lord, the prayers we hold, we hold in, in our, our hearts. hearts. For the people, our local bishop, and all who lead, that they may follow the example of Mary's fiat, we pray. Hear now, Hear now Lord, the Lord, prayers we the prayers hold, in our, we hold in our hearts. For all civic leaders <clears throat> and all who share in the responsibility of enacting laws for the common good, we pray. Hear, Hear now, now Lord, the Lord, the prayers we hold, the prayers in, our we hold in our hearts. For our world, that all places where violence reigns may be healed by the Lord's gift of peace, we pray. Hear, Hear now, now Lord, the prayers, Lord, we, hold the prayers in our we hold hearts. in our hearts. For all students and teachers who prepare for Christmas break, we pray. Hear now, Hear now Lord, the prayers, Lord, we, hold the prayers in our hearts. we hold in our hearts. For all modern day prophets, who challenge society to read the signs of the times, we pray. Hear, Hear now, O Lord, Lord, the prayers we hold, the prayers we in, hold our in our hearts. For all those who find this time of year difficult, 
especially those who are mourning the death of a loved one. We pray. Hear now, O Lord, the prayers we hold in our hearts. The prayers we hold in our hearts. For our parish, that together we may wholeheartedly respond to God's invitation to serve the poor and the needy among us, we pray. Hear now, now, O Lord, the prayers we hold prayers in, we our hold in our hearts. For those who have died, that they may be embraced by God at the heavenly banquet, we pray. Hear now, now, O Lord, the prayers we hold in our hearts. hearts. Now remember the name of the wife of Rapha, it's Patricia. Sorry, Patricia, if I forgot your name, I'm having this lapses, the senior moment. But anyway, we pray for you, Patricia, and for your mom. And we also pray for all your intentions with your people of God, those who are watching us wherever you are, and um, also the people of God of St. Stephen. Lord, please grant us our prayers, especially as we struggle during this time. Please help us. Please help us especially to be like Mother Mary, to be trusting in you, to uh, always believe that you will deliver on your promises, to always be there, to provide for us, to help us to guide us. God of creation, you call the Virgin Mary to be the mother of your son and our mother. Hear our prayer that in following your example, we might also let our lives be instruments of your grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. family that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. 
hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Santo eres en verdad, Señor, fuente de toda santidad. Por eso te pedimos que santifiques estos dones con la efusión de tu espíritu, de manera que se conviertan para nosotros en el cuerpo y la sangre de Jesucristo nuestro Señor, el cual cuando iba a ser entregado a su pasión voluntariamente aceptada, tomó pan dándote gracias lo partió y lo dio a sus discípulos diciendo, tomen y coman todos de él, porque esto es mi cuerpo que será entregado por ustedes. Del mismo modo, acabar la cena, tomó el cáliz y dándote gracias de nuevo, lo pasó a sus discípulos diciendo, tomen y beban todos de él, porque este es el cáliz de mi sangre, sangre de la alianza nueva y eterna, que será derramada por ustedes y por muchos para el perdón de los pecados. Hagan esto en conmemoración mía. Ese es el misterio de la fe.
Así pues, Padre, al celebrar ahora el memorial de la muerte y resurrección de tu Hijo, te ofrecemos el pan de vida y el cáliz de salvación. Y te damos gracias porque nos haces dignos de servirte en tu presencia. Te pedimos humildemente que el Espíritu Santo congregue en la unidad. ¿Cuántos participamos del cuerpo y la sangre de Cristo? Acuérdate, Señor, de tu iglesia extendida por toda la tierra y con el Papa Francisco, con nuestro arzobispo José. Y todos los pastores que cuidan de tu pueblo, llévala a su perfección por la caridad. Acuérdate también de nuestros hermanos que se durmieron en la esperanza de la resurrección y de todos los que han muerto en tu misericordia, admíralos a contemplar la luz de tu rostro. Ten misericordia de todos nosotros y así con María la Virgen, Madre de Dios, su Esposo, San José, los apóstoles y cuantos vivieron en tu amistad. A través de los tiempos merezcamos por tu Hijo Jesucristo compartir la vida eterna y cantar tus alabanzas. Por Cristo con él y en él, a ti Dios Padre omnipotente, en la unidad del Espíritu Santo, todo honor y toda gloria por los siglos de los siglos. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, everyone. Peace, E.J. and Gabriel. Judy and Lourdes, mom, Ate A Luther, Dad, Ate Creatine Baby Me. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. With your family of God, the body of Christ, amen. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever near, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so very much, my dear people of God, for joining us in this Mass, those who have watched this Mass, and uh, the people of God who had served us in this Mass. Thank you, Lourdes, and Judy, and E.J., and Gabriel. And thanks to all of you, um, those who have sponsored our St. Bangabi Masses. Thank you so much uh, for all those who have served during those Masses, lecturing, and um, helping us set up everything 
the altar here during this um, beautiful time of the year, Christmas season. Thank you so much. And um, please continue to, to join us in our Simbangibi celebrations. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God by your lives. Thanks be to God. See you again, my dear family. God bless you. Love you.